so I come across some new things in Genesis 6 and 7 about the story of Noah. I remember growing up in Sunday school, in a primary school, we used to read these Bible stories that were illustrated. You know, they used to give us these Bible story books. Very huge book with very interesting stories, you know, with all the Bible stories. And I remember from some of the, um, the illustrations and the stories, I remember Noah's story very well. And I thank God that some of those Bible stories introduced many of us then to the Bible. But I remembered something. I came across something when I was reading the Bible myself. These are some of the things I read before, but now I have come back and I'm seeing things. Before they told us that Noah built the ark, he was a righteous man, he built the ark and he went out and preached the word of God. for over 120 years and people did not you know believe him they mocked him they didn't believe that the flood story was real and the most interesting thing is that i read the book of noah again the past two days uh the story of noah the, the past two days yesterday and and the day previous And this is what the Bible says. Noah, uh, this is uh, Genesis 6, verse 8. Let me start from 6. 6 days are uh, wickedness in the world. So God wants to destroy man because of the wickedness in chapter 6. You know, because God saw that. Uh, men were, were, were evil and they had born this race of giants, you know, and men, there was so much evil on the earth. But God finds that Noah was the only righteous man then. So he wants him to build an ark. When he wants him to build an ark, he doesn't tell him to go. Let me read from verse 8. Noah finds grace in God's eyes, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just, was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon, looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So building the ark. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the, with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark, and, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of the length of the ark the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits and the breadth of it 50 cubits and the height of it 30 cubits a window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with, with lower, with lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. And behold, 
I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of everything, of all flesh, to all, every sort, shall thou bring into the ark, and keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee. And it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So, so did he. Chapter 7 Noah, his family, and the creatures entered the ark. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee sevens, and male of this or his female, and male and his female, and of beasts that thou are not clean by two, and the male and his female. So it continues, uh, Noah was 600 years old. Uh, verse 5, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Yeah, and it came after uh, verse 10, verse 10, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month and 77th day of the month, 17th day of the month, that day, the same day, were all the fountains, the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the in the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Japheth and the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast of his kind and the cattle and oh, of after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in female and male of all flesh. Hmm? Oh, phone is off. Okay. Sorry about that. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it was lifted, lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and they were increasingly increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the, the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both fall and cut uh, and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died 
and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fall of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days so glory and honor be to god guys i really want to share this profound because you see me when i was growing up we read that noah went out and preached and here there's nothing saying that noah went out and preached to the people and so many people have told this that noah went out and preached now god was determined to destroy the earth he didn't give these guys a chance to repent or anything they were bluntly wicked and later on when we see in the bible christ says the same that it will be like in the days of noah a time is going to come when the word of god will stop after it reaches the whole earth a time will come when the church will be overcome and there will be no one teaching the word of god there will be no one warning anyone like we are seeing it today and destruction will come upon the earth suddenly everyone will know the word of god they will know that god exists god god is loving god is this and that but everyone has their own notion notions and perspective in regards to god and that is all they will have so the most interesting thing is the things i want to share is that where people get these things I want to bring you to the realization and I'm not arguing or I'm not showing that I know guys I, I, I'm not showing that I know I'm simply bringing you the realization that we have to arm ourselves with the Word of God I look at things like the theory of evolution teaching us about dinosaurs and everything well after the flood Noah put all kinds of beasts in that ark and after the flood they all came to the earth and they replenished now if someone tells you about extinction of animal species that is a lie that is one thing you should know that is a lie if someone tells you about dinosaurs that is a lie i know i might look crazy when i'm telling you this but that is a lie because dinosaurs should be coexisting with us right now if they were on that on that ark but the, the bible says that every creature both in the world, both female and, and male and the cattle kind the, the clean uh, the, the clean animals he took seven seven pairs right for the clean and all these other ones he took one pair male female male female male female male female according to the different species so that means if if it, if it was uh, reptiles he got all kinds of reptiles monitor lizards geckos uh, Komodos, what and what and what, all uh, alligators, crocodiles, one crocodile, male, female, they replenished when they came on the earth. You understand? Because that, those are the animals that God had chosen. And the rest that didn't come on the ship, they all were destroyed, both human and creatures. There's movies out there, and I want to warn you guys. I want to show you how you have to be careful guarding your children about uh, over this because this is what they teach in some sunday schools this is what they teach in some some schools because me i was taught this when i was young and maybe they were teaching us out of a good heart really i cannot say that maybe they, they bluntly wanted to deceive us but the fact that i come across this i'm gravely disappointed but yet, I'm, 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 I'm happy that now I can teach my kids the truth from the Bible. I do not dispute people who read supplements from other Christians, from everyone, you know, that God did, did that. All these other supplements, as long as they shoot you back to Christ so that you have a personal relationship with, with Christ, that is a very good supplement to read. But if it is something that prophesy, money this do not waste your time on those things do not even waste your money on those things because the de demons are out there spreading these these doctrines guys i'm telling you 
Satan wants anything from any angle. He's going to shoot you with anything to distract you from God, from the gospel of God. Everyone died. There's movies that show that some there's groups of people that survived the flood. The Bible here says that anything that had a breath in its nostrils died. All those giants died. Now, I don't know if those are the bones that these scientists excavate or they are made up. I do not know about that, guys. I do not know about that. I'm, I'm not going to act wise or smart. I don't know about that. But one thing I know, that every being that was in that world died. And no. So each and everyone on this planet right now, we are brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, because we all came from Noah's seed. We all know our seed. You know, from Adam and Noah, and we have all of Noah. Believe it or not. Agree with it or not. And the proof of it is, with, is that we all have red blood flowing through us meaning we share that in common. We are all brethren. Whether you like one or some, some, someone's race, whether you don't, whether you like their language, whether you do not, whether you identify with them, whether, whether you look at them as low or high, you are related to everyone. Whether distant, whether on the other side of the planet, we are all related. And this is what Satan is doing today with all these things going on with racism. He wants to, to create this notion that, oh, this race hates this race. Oh, this race belittles this race. You understand? And it's true that there are some people that think like that. But not every one of those identified races thinks that way. There are some really, really, really clean-hearted people out there. There are some really clean-hearted black people that genuinely love white people. There are some really clean-hearted white people that genuinely love black people, that love Asians. Do you understand? These genuine Arabs that love African people, these genuine African people that love Arabs, these genuine white people that love Arabs, that, that identify and they see that, hey, this is my brother. I love this person. And these, those wicked ones that really, 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 really hate other people with a passion. And those are the sons of perdition, you know? But the thing is, all these things happening in this life, guys, the Bible is the best thing you can read. No science book, uh, no, no portion of wisdom you can read and get knowledge like this, guys. It's, it's not there. Do not be deceived. Never be deceived by that. It is very evident that the Bible... And let me tell you something. I used to be the kind that used to think, and I'm like, oh, where did, where did life begin like? You know, people... These people look at us, the people deceiving us, the people in bed with Satan. They look at us as sheep heading to the slaughter, honestly. And like these people will literally believe anything we tell them. And these demons, they mock us. And it's so funny that these other people, they know that these are deceptions. Because even themselves, they do not know the truth. Some of them. Some of them do. Some of them don't. But the thing is, they are willing to play along with this deception for a profit, for money. Some of them are scared into it. Some of them have reached there and they've understood that, hey, this whole thing is a deception. I don't stand for it, but they can't come out of it because of fear. So not each and every one you can judge and say, hey, all these people are willing, will, 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 willfully evil. They just want to destroy the earth. Some of them really want to leave, but they are scared. I just realize one thing. Read the word of God. Seek God. Know this truth on your own. Ask yourselves, these things we study, why do they want us to study these things? And I'm not saying that, hey, let's not go to school. The thing is, let's go to school, but let, 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 let us educate ourselves through the Bible. Let us educate our children in the Bible. 
that when they go out there to because today i see people complain a lot they're like hey our children are going um to school right now and you know homosexuals are teaching these children to be homosexuals they're pushing their agendas you know and to our kids the thing is if you teach your kids the ways of god and you prove it to them here you don't even need to go down and sit and explain to your kids that hey this and that get them the bible and read the truth that's in the bible your kids will be protected guys they'll be protected do not be like these other christians that haven't come to this knowledge that haven't come to this realization that hey we have nothing to fear the bible says that you in in, in the 23rd psalm that even if i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil that means you're going to walk through the darkest of moments and still god has your back you understand you shouldn't fear anything that hey these people have taken a, they've taken over our country they have done god will preserve his people i i, I see videos right now online of um i, I do not disapprove of these videos because besides you don't have the power to approve or disapprove but these videos some some christians have come out and they're talking about this famine coming upon the earth i'm not saying it is false it might be true that is coming and the way they have received this knowledge they, they come and share it but it causes fear and panic in the masses and people are scared but let me tell you one thing if you are of god you don't need to fear god gave the israelites manna in the desert when they had no food what makes you think that god is not going to protect you god can raise a joseph that will save the world from this from this uh thing going on the famine that's if it's really coming I, i do not know but these people can't speak and i say that they're not speaking from god but even as they speak i'm like hey fine they have said it let me arm my mind uh, let me let me um prepare my mind my spirit that even if this famine comes i still have god and god will create a way and even if he doesn't create a way it is for his own purpose he will still remain good read the bible guys i do not know how many times i'm going to share these videos that read the bible on your own you're going to see this truth no i never went out to preach the word of god because all these people they already knew about god but they were bluntly wicked and that's how it's going to be in these last days you know I'm trying to bring you guys to the encouragement that if you know the word of God you're never going to fear I'm telling you me I had fear I had fear of everything before I was a Christian I could even when I just become a Christian I had these fears and I was like Lord but when I read the Bible I am more and more confident that none of these things should in fact right now I even pray that I'm around in the time of the antichrist Honestly, I would love to see all that happen. I would love to see the Lord come back right now. I don't care about the, the time of tribulation. So many people are scared to be there. But I do not mind even if I stay for that time. I would love to see it. If God wills, you know, I would love to see it and see all this thing happen. But maybe God, maybe God might not let me. Maybe God might let me. I do not know. I would love to see all these things come to pass man it, it, it would be amazing and I wouldn't be even scared you know so many people are scared because they are attached to this world if you are not attached to this world you shouldn't fear anything guys the fact that you have that fear that is because there's still some stitches there's, there's still some stitches that connect you to the world and you have to cut all those ties you understand I want to sh- tell you this that I still share these these things out of love and for your own personal growth because a time is going to come when the church is scattered you're going to be somewhere where you can't even have access to the internet i'm telling you when you can't even have access to the internet maybe the internet will be down we do not know but god always creates a way you see how let me give you a word of hope and this is not from god but it's an observation as me here comes in a great time of of um this uh distress 
where there's no petrol, there's no gas. Everyone all over the world is complaining about this. And here comes a man, Elon Musk, that is creating electric cars. And his business is growing and growing and growing. Might God use this man to transition us into the electric world and we leave the petrol and gas that these Arabs have been you know, controlling us over? You understand? That these people have been using that anyone can have an electric car at some point. Nobody knows. But I look at him and I'm like, hey, God might use this guy. I do not know if God is going to use this guy. But I see that God can use this guy. And he points us in that direction. And people start getting electric cars. You know? And people leave this stress of of, of buying gas. Because even gas stinks, you know? Driving a car, it stinks. You know? Look at life, guys. From a positive perspective. Do not lament every single time you see something. I told you, I keep telling you, as long as you have a meal and you have clothing and you have where to sleep, you are blessed. Count your blessings. God bless you.